hello world is a program that outputs the message hello world. Because it's such a simple program, it's a great first program to write when learning a new programming language. Because without any wasted effort, it'll confirm that you understand the basic syntax of the language and that you're actually able to execute a program written in that language. For those same reasons, I think it's also a great way to get acquainted with Turing machines. A Turing machine consists of four parts. It has a tape divided into cells where each cell contains a symbol, a head that reads one cell at a time, a state register that stores the state of the machine. The state allows the Turing machine to behave differently at different times given the same scanned symbol, and a list of instructions to follow. And these instructions are in the form, if the head is currently reading this symbol and the machine is in this state, then replace the symbol with this new symbol, move the head in this direction, and update the state to this new state. Formally, you need seven things to define a Turing machine. You need to define the set of states that the machine can be in, the alphabet, which is the set of symbols that can appear on the tape, the blank symbol, the default symbol for a cell on the tape, which is part of the alphabet. You need to specify the initial state. When you first start the Turing machine, what state is it in? The set of final states, note this is a set, not a single state. You can have multiple final states, and if the machine ever reaches any of them, it halts. Then you need the set of instructions, which, as I mentioned before, tell the machine what to do when it's in a specific state, reading a specific symbol. And finally, though we don't need it for the Hello World Turing machine, you need to define the set of input symbols, the symbols that can initially appear on the tape as input. And that's all there is to defining a Turing machine. Before we go ahead and write the formal definition of the Hello World Turing machine, let's first informally describe how it behaves. It starts with a tape of all blanks, so the head is reading a blank symbol. It will replace the blank with an H and move one cell to the right. So again, it's reading a blank symbol, but this time it will replace it with an E and move one cell to the right, where again, <laughs> it's reading a blank symbol. It'll keep replacing the blanks with the next letter in hello world and moving to the right until it writes the D, at which point it halts. Since it's always scanning the blank symbol, the machine has to decide what symbol to replace the blank with based solely on its state. In the initial state, it replaces it with an H. It needs to transition to a new state, otherwise it would write H's forever. In the new state, it replaces the blank with an E and then it needs to transition to a new state again. This next state is a little trickier because after writing the first L, we want to write a second L. But we can't keep the machine in the same state because then it would never leave that state, keep writing Ls forever. So there need to be two separate states, one for the first L and one for the second L. We'll need one state for each letter in Hello World, including the space. The state dictates which letter to replace the blank with and the next letter to write. And we'll need one final state, a halting state to transition to after the D. So for the formal definition of the Turing machine, we already have the transition function. And given that, the rest is straightforward. The set of states is the set of states that appear in the list of instructions. The alphabet is the blank symbol plus the letters in hello world. The blank symbol is, of course, the blank symbol. The initial state is H. The set of final states is a set containing F. And this Turing machine doesn't accept any input. If it reads anything besides a blank when in the initial state, it'll halt, since we haven't defined an instruction for what to do in that case. So it doesn't matter what we define the input symbols to be, but typically the input symbols are everything in the alphabet except the blank symbol. The blank symbol isn't allowed to be an input symbol because otherwise the Turing machine wouldn't be able to figure out where the input ended. And that's the formal definition of the Hello World Turing machine.